Let me bring in tonight's sure. panel. Uh, Asma Khalid, NPR White House correspondent, Maria Teresa Kumar, President and CEO of Voto Latino, NBC News contributor, and Doug High, Republican strategist and former communications director for the RNC. Asma, I want to put up a, a little chart of the Supreme Court's poll numbers. Mm. Um, I want to show you something. In 2002, two years after the single most controversial thing a Supreme Court has ever done, Decide the outcome of a presidential election. Half the country had a great deal or quite a bit of confidence in the Supreme Court. So that's why I want to put that in context. 2002, two years after the single most political decision they ever made, divisive decision they ever made, arguably, and they had a 50% essentially confidence rating. It's cut in half 20 years later. In half. You know, at some point, Chief Justice Roberts, who I think we all believe wants to improve the perception of the court, needs to step up. I mean, I do think these numbers are very challenging. Our own polling, too, NPR, PBS News, our Maris did a poll, too. Very similar results that people have very little. I think the majority of the public has very little confidence in the Supreme Court. Look, I mean, I think the challenge for the Chief Justice, though, is that ultimately, I mean, these are public perception problems, and the court has been, I think, immune by nature, given who and what the court is, mm -hmm. from responding to public pressure and public perception. Um, yeah. So how does he invade and, and step into that territory now? I really don't know. I mean, the court has never had to be answerable to the public. You know, Doug, I think if, if the Republicans want to be taken seriously in their investigations into the Bidens, mm -hmm. they got to take this seriously. And obviously we know Jersey color indicates that won't be the case. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. Right. And everything that you laid out was, was defined in, in, in your earlier intro where you talked about the tribalism and the jersey color wearing. And, and that's, that's ultimately it. And it's why we see, even after Bush versus Gore, uh, the numbers of the, the court falling because every justice is illegitimate if they're not your guess, justice. Guess what, guess what the biggest difference, though, I would argue, between 02 and now? Back then, we knew it took 60 votes to get a justice mm -hmm. in the Supreme Court. Mm. And there is something about that I do think we have politicized and polarized the entire judiciary by lowering it to 50 because it's a different kind of judge that gets nominated now, Doug. Sure. I've talked to folks in White, old folks in White House Counsel's office. Bush, Bush's White House Counsel once said, oh, if it was 50 votes, we'd have an entirely different set of people we would have mm -hmm. nominated. Yeah, absolutely. It changes the complete dynamic, but we, we still go back to that place of my, my justice is, is amazing and yeah. your justice is illegitimate. And we've, we see that infecting our politics. Everything is tribal. And the Hunter Biden comparison, I think, is yeah. apt. Maria Teresa? So I think I mean, part of the challenge is that you also have, on the backdrop, you're increasingly seeing receipts of Clarence Thomas and wrongdoing. And mm -hmm. Justice Roberts not saying, you know what, we are going to hold ourselves to a higher standard because our institutions are vulnerable right now. And I think that's what you were ta alluding to, Chuck. Our institutions of governance, people's trust in the system. But at the same time, what we have is a court that is increasingly dictating and legislating mm -hmm. because we have a dysfunction in Congress. So instead of Congress legislating a woman's right to choose, we're expecting the court to do that, which is not where it was meant to be. And I think it's the juxtaposition of, one, people saying it's not my justice because of, because of what you're saying regarding the 50-50. Mm -hmm. Two is we're finding receipts of corruption. And three, the court's chain has mm -hmm. changed in the way they determine really big issues that were once relegated to Congress. Mm -hmm. And this as, as was something that, that I do think um, we're asking for the Senate to be outraged. I think we should be outraged. The United States Senate created this catastrophe. Mm -hmm. They are the creators of this catastrophe. And if, they, if the Republicans want to blame Harry Reid and, and the Democrats want to blame Ben Fricano, great. You collectively have destroyed the judiciary branch. I, I think that's an excellent point, right? That there is some, and I think your point was exactly right. When you lower the threshold of the number of senators who have to approve a justice, you are going to require less bipartisanship to likely get a justice mm -hmm. through. Um, look, I mean, I don't think those rules in the Senate are changing anytime soon. Uh, I think no, the not. reality is right now, I don't, I mean, I don't mean to be so negative about this, but I don't entirely see a pathway out. That's what's so frustrating about it, Asma. I mean, I, I, am, I am just genuinely, as a citizen, just... Like fresh frustrated and angry like I, I don't understand you know if, if I'd be fired for behaving this way right. mm -hmm. this man is a Supreme Court justice I mean, he is, this is embarrassing to the United States of America. But that's exactly what the public should be outraged around. And that's where Justice Roberts says, you know what, you're actually right. We it, have to we clean would up not house. Be, the regular person yes. would be treated differently, Doug. And that is what's happening now. 
Well, and even the regular member of Congress would be treated differently. The, the rules Members of ethics. Congress are going to jail. Right. Mm -hmm. Some of them did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chris Collins That's for right. special yeah, treatment. Right. Whatever yeah. you think. Traffic camps back trading. in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're held accountable, at least in, in some form. In some form. And yeah. look, you know, we still have some members of Congress who haven't gotten through that process yet. Obviously, George Santos being a good example. But mm -hmm. these, are, these are credible questions that have been coming up. And, and the one question I do have... And I've, I've said this is legitimate in Clarence Thomas for a long time. Clarence Thomas is getting a lot more attention than eight other justices. Mm -hmm. You know, Justice Roberts is, Chief Justice Roberts has yeah, been questions about they the larger the court. Yeah. And, and I don't think we know. Is this specifically a Clarence Thomas question, which is a problem? Is this a larger question and not a perception problem for the court, but a substantive but problem the, for the I court? I would argue the Clarence Thomas thing is actually, it is bigger because you do have uh, a spouse who is a political exactly. activist. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Asma, this is something we have not seen before. It isn't, and it's something that you see in, uh, I would say, a number of other countries. And the United States often holds itself up to this very high standard in terms of the responsibility of its judiciary. And, and there is, I think, a sense of it, uh, you could say whether it's deserved or not, but an entitlement, right, in terms yeah. of our institutions being so We're beyond reproach. We're better than reproach, everybody else. Right? And these like are the things that you yeah. see in all, I mean, I think anyone who has immigrant roots will say, like, this reminds you of what you see in other countries. But we and, also yeah. know what happens with the deterioration of those institutions oh, exactly. in other countries. And yeah. that's why we are the beacon of making sure that we are a standard, bearer, not and, just for the United States, but world. Worldwide. And the single most important of those in three institutions is the judiciary branch. Yeah. And because that's what sort of keeps us all on the on this wobbly level of playing field. It's not Same level. Sandbox. It's a little wobbly, but it kind of sort of has kept us a little bit above the fray compared to everybody else. Not anymore. No, and, and look, how many times have we had the conversation of what conservatives say publicly and privately about Donald Trump? Those conversations are happening right now in the same level. Oh, about Clarence Thomas? Absolutely. I, they, I, Everybody knows this is an egregious behavior. They just can't get caught saying it. I don't know. I mean, you tell me the, the, the thing about it. I, mean, I don't know why conservatives... I mean, the, the conversation of not saying it publicly, I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, there are political calculations as to why... It's a zero-sum game. But, All but of our politics when, are a zero-sum game. Yeah, but I guess uh, to what oh, but Maria Teresa, right? but, but, but to, to what But the and Biden the, crime family. Right. Like, that is going mm -hmm. to be the retort by many people on the right. Right, but I do think that what, if we are... We recognize that our democracy is in a vulnerable position, Chuck. We mm -hmm. recognize that the judiciary is the one that allows us to play equally in the same sandbox. If we don't hold it accountable, we are actually unraveling this incredible country. And that's what the problem is. And that's mm -hmm. where Justice Roberts really needs to recognize, is it party or country? And I would encourage him to consider country above all else. I mean, I do think the polarization, though, to me, is is it symptomatic or is it actually the cause, right? I mean, we talk about this all the I time. I think when it's you talk the about, cause, yeah. I know, right? I you talk yeah. about, look at the House districts, look at how uncompetitive pretty much any house district is now compared to where it was 30 years ago, right? It's I mean, the incentive structures, right? <laughs> if the incentive, if, if what it takes to win is to win a moderate, you're moderating. Mm -hmm. If what it takes to win is to, to be MAGA, base. you MAGA way, right? I mean, it is. And, and there's very made, few districts where you actually have to be moderate. Every like, incentive structure is for partisan hackery. I'm sorry. But Whether the court should not be. But, but we just did it by be. lowering... Again, yeah. this is where I put it at the feet of the United States Senate. You know, that's, that's where the argument that a lifetime appointment should get rid of all the politics. But what have we learned? It doesn't. Not if you, not if you play by there's these no, set of rules. Right, if there's no accountability at the very end. And that's, there, I think that's the challenge, is that there's no accountability mm -hmm. for crossing the line of corruption. That's a shame. All right. Doug, Maria Teresa, Asma, this was quite not uplifting. <laughs> Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.